This presentation describes a general structure for an academic project and its report. Students might undertake several kinds of project, and there are many ways of doing this. The concepts presented here have been tried and tested successfully over several years for undergraduate and MSc projects, both campus-based and work-based. If this structure does not fit your project precisely, feel free to modify it for a better fit. Here is an overview of my suggested project structure. An academic project often starts with a problem or a question. The project will always involve some secondary research, which is the discovery of what work has already been done in the project area. Primary research should also be done. This involves implementing some kind of project-specific artefact and evaluating its effectiveness as a solution to the project's problem area. An academic project must always draw some conclusions, as well as critically review the project process. Let's now consider each of these in a bit more detail. You start your project by identifying a problem or a question that you want to focus on. You might already have a problem in mind, or you might need to read around your chosen field for a while until something grabs your attention. Some students start by saying, I want to do some programming in language X. This is not the best approach. First, identify a problem or research question, and then, probably much later, think about the implementation details. If you are stuck for ideas, be observant of the world around you. At some point, you'll see something that makes you think, I can do that better. For example, a few years ago, somebody probably stood in a queue for a train ticket and thought, this is a waste of time. I could write an application that lets people order their tickets online and pick them up from a ticketing machine in the station. The aim of the literature review is to find out what the experts in your chosen area have to say about the research question you are addressing, with a view to identifying possible answers to your question. You will need to consult academically credible sources, such as journal articles, refereed conference papers, and books. You should avoid using information you find on the web unless you can show that it has been reviewed by experts in your chosen area. When you write a note, always record the source of the information with the note using the Harvard system. This will avoid many headaches, such as questions of plagiarism, later on. When you write your literature review, you are reporting what the experts say about your research question. Use your own words as much as possible. Use direct quotations as little as possible. In all cases, correctly identify the source of the information using the Harvard system. A good rule of thumb for the literature review is to have at least one reference per paragraph. To prevent your literature review being a regurgitation of general computing topics, you must critically analyze what you have found and apply this knowledge to the context of your project. You might do this in a single section at the end of the literature review, taking each area of the review in turn and making insightful comments about its relevance or non-relevance to your project, making well-reasoned arguments about why you will or will not include it in your project. Alternatively, you might embed the analysis within the literature review. Whichever approach you use, make sure you label your analysis sections clearly so that your supervisor and second assessor can clearly identify them. This will help them navigate your report when marking your work. Your purpose in the analysis is to show how the expert's views in the literature review has a bearing on your research question. You should discuss possible alternative solutions to your research question and, with well-reasoned justification, decide which options you are proposing as the theoretical solution to your question. When it comes to the implementation stage of the project, your aim is to take your proposed theoretical solution to the research question, which you developed in the analysis stage of the secondary research, and implement it in some practical context. Here are some examples. If you have proposed a new software application architecture, then you could implement a software application using that architecture. 
This would involve the normal software development process of analysis, design, implementation and testing. The order in which you perform these activities will depend upon the software development lifecycle you have elected to use. If you have proposed a framework for the evaluation of widgets, then you could implement the framework by using it to evaluate a number of widgets. This means you would have to select the widgets that you want to evaluate, use the framework to get some results, and then critically review the results to deduce the effectiveness of your framework. If you have proposed a workflow process, then you could build a prototype to implement the workflow. Like example 1, this would involve the normal software development process of analysis, design, implementation and testing according to some life cycle. In the body of the report, you should clearly describe the implementation process and discuss the most interesting or challenging parts of the implementation product. In the appendices, you would provide the implementation product, for example, plans, designs, screenshots and so on. Generally, Source code goes on a CD or DVD, which you should attach securely to your report. During implementation, you build an artifact that embodies your theoretical solution. You now have some practical experience that will throw light on the validity of your solution. In the validation phase of the project, your aim is to discuss what strengths and weaknesses of the theoretical solution have been identified by your primary research. You should reflect on the decisions made in the analysis of the secondary research and comment on the appropriateness of those decisions. Where there is weakness or mistake, discuss alternatives that would be better. The identification of weakness and incorrect decisions is just as valid and just as important as seeing the strengths and successes. When done properly, this process can turn apparent failure of solution into a successful project. You are now ready to draw conclusions. This is where you summarize your project, drawing together all previous parts of the project. You should remind your reader of the research question you have been addressing, as well as your aim and objectives. You should highlight the major points of the theoretical solution that came out of the analysis of the secondary research. Then you should recapitulate the implementation process finishing with a summary of the outcome of the validation process. You should also state what further work is needed to improve on your theoretical solution. Finally, you need to pass critical judgment on your performance at each stage of the project. Be honest and complete. Review your project's accomplishments and shortcomings in terms of the original aim and objectives. What should you have done differently? And what could you have done differently? Evaluate the success, or otherwise, of each stage of the project, and where there is dissatisfaction, you should discuss what could have been done differently. This is a very important part of the project because it shows that you are learning from your mistakes. Writing your report is one of the most important parts of the project process because it is what your examiners will use to judge the value of your work. You can assume that the reader's knowledge matches your knowledge when you started the project, so you do not need to rewrite lecture notes from levels 4 and 5. The report should lead the reader through the journey of your project, so tell a story. Make your narrative interesting. Convey the enthusiasm that you have for the subject. To keep the report flowing, avoid huge blocks of text. Break it up with relevant and eye-catching diagrams, and use tables to present information rather than simply writing boring facts and figures. A well-structured report will help the story flow and will help the examiners find their way around your report when marking it. So, to make your life easier, use headings in Word at the beginning of every section and subsection and then insert a table of contents. Word will automatically build the table of contents from the headings. The report structure about to be described follows the report structure already discussed. You might want to use different section headings and a different order, but whatever you do, ensure there is a clear, logical structure. The abstract is the first thing presented in your report, but it is actually written after everything else has been done. It summarizes in one or two short paragraphs what you wanted to do, what you actually did, 
and what you concluded. This is sometimes called the executive summary and is intended for very busy people who want to know about your project but have only got a couple of minutes to read about it. The introduction sets the scene for your work on the project. A lot of this information can be drawn from your project proposal. In the background section, describe why you are doing the project. Then you state in a single sentence what your project is about. The best approach here is to turn your research question into a statement. The objectives are a statement of the steps you plan to take to achieve your aim. The deliverables are the results of meeting your objectives. The ethical statement is a careful consideration of the ethical implications of your work. In the risk analysis section, you should show that you have considered the health and safety of everyone involved in your project, including yourself. Your description of the research methods used in your project will depend on the level of your study. If you are writing an MSc dissertation, you will need to describe your research methods in terms of the philosophy that underpins them, whereas an undergraduate project will need to summarise only what approaches were taken to achieve the project's aim and objectives. In the chapter describing your secondary research, you write the literature review, which is a review of the expert opinion you have discovered in journal articles, refereed conference papers and books. Remember to make this interesting, readable and relevant to your project. As discussed earlier, in the analysis section you are critically discussing what you have found in the literature and applying this knowledge to the context of your project. This is where you make decisions about what the theoretical solution to your research question should look like. In the chapter about your primary research, you must describe the process by which you engineered a product to test your theoretical solution. You should show how your project's artefact is underpinned by the knowledge you gained during the secondary research. References back to the secondary research makes for a very strong project. In the validation section, you need to evaluate the merits of the implementation and discuss what light it throws on the theoretical solution. This is a very important section because it reveals your powers of analysis. You should be honest and put equal emphasis on the strengths and weaknesses of both process and product. Even if the product is disappointing, this can be mitigated by following a good process. In the conclusions section, you summarize your project, drawing together all the previous parts of the project. You should remind your reader of the research question you were considering, your aim and objectives, you should highlight the major points of the theoretical solution that came out of the analysis of the secondary research. Then you should recapitulate the implementation process, finishing with a summary of the outcome of the validation process. You should also state what further work is needed to improve on your theoretical solution. There is good reason for summarising everything in the conclusions. If a busy person who only has time to read the abstract decides that the report might actually be of interest, then he or she will probably turn to the conclusions section first. This summary of the entire project will be more detailed than the abstract, but will not take very long to read. If the reader then wants a very detailed description, he or she will be able to use the table of contents to locate the precise page on which the information is to be found. In the critical evaluation section, you pass critical judgment on your performance, including both process and product, at each stage of the project. Be honest and complete. Review your project's accomplishments and shortcomings in terms of the original aim and objectives. What you should have done differently, or what you could have done differently, should also be covered. In the References section, use the Harvard Referencing System and list the references in ascending alphabetical order of first author surname. In the appendices, you include information that is too large for the body of the report. Remember, to keep the reader's interest, the report should flow easily. If a diagram or table covers more than one page, it will interrupt the flow, so move it into the appendices. Make sure that each appendix has a heading so that it appears in the table of contents and label it 
so that a glance in the table of contents tells the reader what the appendix holds. The suggested report structure is a good place to start. Very early in the project, create a Word document and type out these section headings. This becomes your working document. As you read something in the literature, make notes in this document. As you do something in the primary research, write it up in this document. At the end of the project, you can edit the working document to produce your final report. And remember, the abstract is the very last thing that you write. I hope you have found this presentation helpful and I wish you luck with your project. Above all, enjoy it.